All right, guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Black Hat Python. Now, this next section is pretty long, pretty lengthy, and originally I was going to do it all in one video, but I'm definitely going to need to break this down in more digestible chunks because, honestly, it's even uh, a bit difficult for me to kind of process all this stuff with the way that they do it and the way they're implementing it. But uh, basically, we're going to be recreating Netcat, uh, which is a bit of an undertaking because it's pretty much like the Swiss Army knife of you know little networking utilities that you can use, right? So there's a lot of functionality we're going to have to code in here. So I thought it would start here with the basic outline of what we're trying to do, and we're going to just kind of build upon this in the coming videos. So... The nice thing about this code is it's something that you can take for yourself and you can use this in future projects because this is pretty much the baseline of how to create a command line tool. If you were wondering of how, like how, how, do, uh, how do developers create these tools that uh, allow you to specify different options with flags and things like that, uh, this is one way you can do it. You can use uh, arg parse. I've done this myself many times, right? You can add different arguments and you can give it a shorthand. You can give it the longhand form and uh, tell it uh, what, what you want it to do. Now, this is a nice starting point because we're giving it some arguments. We're going to say uh, it's going to be able to uh, take in commands and run commands, you know, like, com like a command shell, right? And uh, it's going to be able to execute... Uh, specified commands and have a listening feature, right? You should be able to listen on a certain port or connect to another port, right? Or, uh, you know, connect to a specific IP address and even allow you to upload files and things like that, right? And right here is a little help section. Let me, let me just start from the top, right? A lot of these things I'm not using yet, and to be honest, some of these uh, modules I've never used before. Arg parse I've used before quite a bit. We're importing that so that, of course, we can create command line arguments and have it parse the arguments to see what the user wants. And uh, socket where you can, you know, it's basically needed to uh, connect to and use a IP address paired with a port that is known as a socket. So we need the socket module for that. Now, this Schlex, I have not actually used before. Subprocess, it can uh, basically create a subprocess on the system. Uh, and uh, sys is to run, like, um, system commands, right? Text wrap is just for the for a nice output where it will actually wrap, it, uh, wrap the output, which can be very handy in uh, command line apps, right? And then threading, of course, for the multi-threading. So the only one I guess I really never used is this Schlex, but uh, yeah, we're gonna define a uh, command right here. Uh, well, we're actually not defining a command, but we're defining a function called execute that takes in a parameter that we're calling command. And we're gonna run uh, the strip function against that. Now what that does is that, and here's a good way to, I pulled this up so you guys could see visually if you're more of a visual person. Basically, what it's going to do is remove spaces at the beginning and ending of a string. So, for example, if you have something like this, it's going to remove the white space here and all the white space at the end as well. So, you're just left with banana. So, X is just going to be equal to banana. So, it will print out of all fruits, banana is my favorite without any of these weird spaces here. So, that is what the, it's a built-in uh, method here. And that's what this built-in strip method is doing. And you can run that on any string. Execute is a string, or sorry, command is a string. So you can perform uh, that method on the string just in case the user enters in some random spaces on accident. And basically, if the user doesn't supply any command, then it's just going to exit out. But if he does, then it's going to store, uh, it's going to run the subprocess here and use schlex on. I'm not exactly sure what this line is doing because I don't really I don't really know what schlex, uh, schlex is. Oh, here we go. Just mouse over it, right? A lexical analyzer class for simple shell-like syntaxes. Okay. So that gives me a little bit of an idea. So it's basically something that you would use with uh, creating command line tools, basically. 
And so maybe it helps it uh, process it a little bit better. But uh, basically, it's going to store this in the output here. And it's going to be encoded output, I guess. So we're going to need to decode that and we'll return the decoded output. But then here is uh, what happens if we run this as, uh, if we if we run this netcat, netcat.py file directly, right? Remember, if dunder name dunder is equal to dunder main dunder, then that means we actually ran netcat.py. So that way if someone imports this, into their code, it's not gonna run anything inside here, right? So we wanna create a parser, and to do that, we'll say arg parse dot argument parser, and basically, as the name implies, it's going to parse uh, looking for our arguments, and uh, it'll set that equal to the parser, right? And this is a little bit of, I think, extra metadata for it to let it know what specific format or class and all this stuff you want to use. Something that you can just make note of. You don't have to really memorize this, right? And then here, this epilogue te text wrap dedent. Here's where you can actually put in a little comment where uh, a user can see the usage so they can uh, figure out how to use the tool if they're not sure. And here's some examples that uh, they supplied uh, in the example. And it was uh, here, you know, if you want to use the command shell, you know, this is how you do it. If you want to use this functionality or that functionality, this is how you would do it, right? But, yeah, these are just the examples, right? But this is where the real meat and potatoes is, is like the uh, the arguments. Now, of course, we didn't create this functionality within the code yet. These are just, uh, these are kind of like a nice way to have the placeholders and like a, an overview of what we need to create, right? We need to create functionality for all of these flags here. Uh, and that's gonna happen later on in the code. Uh, but this is how you actually create arguments. So anytime you wanna create a command line tool and have certain arguments, this is where you would do it. You would say parser.add underscore argument. And this first one, so we for one thing, we want to uh, have commands, right? You can run a, like a command shell. And uh, here is an example that corresponds with that, right? In this case, you're specifying the target there, which is this IP address, the ports, this port, and you want to uh, listen, and you want to do dash C for a command shell. Okay? This is like uh, the functionality we're going to have to actually build it out later, but... And then for this one, if we want to maybe execute a specific command... Here would be the example that corresponds to that, where, you know, give it the target, give it the port, listen, and then execute uh, cat Etsy password. Now, if you notice here, they got these backslashes in front of the double quote, and that is because they want it to be interpreted as a uh, string literal in this case. So they need to use the escape uh, escape character, which is backslash there in order to do that. And uh, following that, I mean, we also are going to, of course, provide functionality for lis uh, a listener, right? So you want to create a listener, listen on a certain, uh, you know, port, then you're going to be able to do that. And a lot of these examples make use of that flag uh, that we already looked at here. And then, of course, for the port, uh, in this case, we're having it default to... Five 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 five. So, kind of interesting here in these examples they chose. I guess just so you could understand, they specified that. But if they didn't specify a port, it would assume port five 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 just based off of this right here. But of course, you can specify a different port, uh, and then target. That's where you just put the IP address, and it's going to actually default to this IP address in this case. And uh, you also have these help things here. So that will probably show up in the, uh, when you run help. And uh, then you have a uh, dash U for upload. And you can actually upload a file. So here's an example of that functionality, right? In this case, it's assuming that you have a file called mytest.txt in the directory that you're currently running this from. 
Uh, and if you do, then it'll upload it once we build in that functionality, of course. And then this last line here, args, you're creating a variable args, setting equal to parser dot parse args. So whatever, when it parses the arguments supplied by the user, uh, it's going to actually set that, uh, it's going to store that to this variable so that you can retrieve it later and run the proper functions that correspond to whatever flags, uh, whatever options they selected, right? And so, yep, this is a nice outline, a nice starting point. I hope this makes sense for the most part to you guys. Don't worry about understanding every little part, like certain things you can kind of just uh, put down in your notes and you, you just, you'll just be able to reference them later. You don't have to be able to recall all of this from memory, but as long as you generally understand what's going on, can kind of you were able to step through that with me. I think you'll be good uh, to go as we move forward here. One thing I also would like to point out is that, yeah, Netcat is a tool that you can use, but there might be some fringe cases where knowing how to do something like this in Python is extremely useful. For example, what if you have what if you're on a Windows box, you don't have access to Netcat, but you have access to Python now. Typically, I would still say, hey, transfer a netcat binary onto that Windows box, uh, and it's going to be easier than doing this. But maybe you're in like a red team engagement where you don't want to dump uh, stuff to disk, right? And, you know, you might be operating in some other constraints where knowing how to do something like this quick and dirty uh, and just creating it custom might be the stealthier approach might be the better suited tool to your particular situation. Personally, as a pen tester, I don't know that I would necessarily need to use this, but it's another tool in my tool belt. Maybe I'll be on OSCP or something and I'll run into some crazy edge case where this could be my solution. So definitely don't glaze over this, pay attention to this and just add it as yet another tool in your tool belt. So hopefully this video was of help. I know this isn't doing too much just yet, but you know, bear with me, stick with it. This is a pretty long section here, and we're going to be going through it in digestible chunks and replicating Netcat. Definitely a pretty interesting thing in my opinion. So uh, yeah, if you, or if you found this video helpful, definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like button to help get this information out there as well. And uh, yeah, if you want to see some of the more preliminary videos we've done on this topic, check out, uh, well, I'll point in the right direction for once here. Check out uh, the video on screen, the playlist on screen now, uh, Black Hat Python. And I will see you guys over in those videos. Thanks for watching.